Hey everyone. All right, I am transporting myself back to the spring of 2020, uh, or maybe even a little earlier than that, when I was just finishing up the Marvel Masterpieces set that I worked on. And this is the Swordsman versus Black Knight Battle Spectra piece, which I don't really know these characters, but I really liked this painting. I actually found the Swordsman, uh, excuse me, the Black Knight to be a really fun character to paint. I just think the costume design is really fun. It's different from your typical superhero with all these more kind of Arthurian knight kind of design elements to it. And this particular piece with these two characters, the, the, the battle specters were always hard to compose because for one thing, you want to get to see both characters pretty clearly. You want to see their faces if possible. And you also need it to read at such a small scale when it's reduced down to a card size to have these two characters in conflict with each other and have them both kind of featured prominently. It's tricky and it feels at times like there's only so many different ways you can do it. So with these characters, I felt like having this kind of face off was a reasonable, I, I think that they seem to me like a real kind of two sides of a coin or or kind of that like hero and foil type of thing where it's like one is mirroring the other. I don't know how, I, I, I truly don't know very much about the swordsman character. I did research all of this when I was working on the piece and that was a few years ago and so I kind of forget now. So I think that it's story-wise appropriate, but just in terms of design, I feel like it's really satisfying to see when, when you've got this kind of mirror image of the two characters facing each other. And it's very graphic and you get these really nice bold shapes. And so I really wanted to lean into that with this piece and have the background be very bright and have the the two characters as semi silhouettes against that so that your first thing you see when you look at the piece you get this initial read of the the shape of these two figures facing each other and then you see the more nuanced kind of details within but really the darkest values in the background are probably close to the brightest values in the two figures. So you get this real separation of, of them in the foreground and then this washed out, really kind of blown out background behind them, which something I just, I, I think that if done judiciously can be a really cool and effective way to compose a piece. It really depends on the silhouette when you're doing something like that also. Uh, tried to make the silhouette here really tell the story. These two figures facing each other with the crossed swords below. This also connects a little bit with the previous video I shared where I'm talking about the whole concept of working globally and doing what's the next most important thing as you develop the piece. And I don't feel like I have a total mastery over this concept. It's something that I was introduced to uh, 20 years ago, and I'm still thinking about and working it into the way that I work. But in this piece, especially in the sketch in the beginning, you can see where it's kind of developed in layers, but the layers are wet on wet. I'm painting and painting back into those areas and not necessarily working stuff to a finish, before moving on to the next piece, but kind of taking it to a point where it leads me into the next thing and then coming back and continuing to develop and, and refine. It's a little bit, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I'm totally getting it here, but I think that you can see that happening to some degree. This piece, especially I think because it is so much based on silhouettes. There is a lot of that 
massing in and then coming in and building uh, lighter tones on top. So just just that like making a big dark shape and then coming in and putting some mid-tones into it that start to give it more dimension and start describing the costume more. And then in those mid-tones, pulling out even lighter tones and highlights. And it's very satisfying to, when you're doing that, see it start to take shape and take volume. And I think the this piece, I just, I've always really liked this painting. I think there is for me, satisfaction is really the best word for it. There is this feeling and watching the piece take shape, I, I really feel like it looks good and then it looks better and then it looks better and then it looks done. And that's, that's really, I think, what I'm talking about. It has this kind of solidity to it when it finally when those when those highlights finally come down and it just pulls together and it just feels good when that moment comes and then once the the silhouettes of the figures are finished same as with the sketch i, I kind of worked out those figures first and then moved into the background and at this point the figures really are done and then it's a matter of taking that mid-tone, light mid-tone background and just adding all of these brighter values on top. And there's a gradient also going on in the background that's kind of subtle, but having this kind of like pinkish tone at the top, which as you get to the bottom of the piece shifts a little bit more kind of yellow, orange, it's not really heavy handed, but I think it's enough that it gets the gets the job done. And I think that's something around the time that I was doing the Marvel Masterpieces uh, paintings. And I remember doing some Dark Horse covers around this time also, where I was really having fun getting into playing around with gradients, both tonal and especially color gradients on pieces that I just think is, is a really fun way to add some drama and, and interest to a piece. It re really is just, I don't know, it just feels good, looks good. So yeah, that's, that's how this piece came together and really happy with it. I think it really achieved the, the goal that I was going for and very pleased with the end result. Thanks so much for listening, and also thank you to those who support this channel on Patreon.